Well, good morning, everyone. It's Friday, it's April 3rd, and as I always say, let's get into it right now. What a week, right, folks? What a week. Global stock market declines after soaring U.S. job losses, tempered enthusiasm about a possible deal to stabilize oil, which I'm hoping is going to happen in the next few weeks. That'll really shore up support for the market. Markets in London and Frankfurt traded lower while Shanghai, Hong Kong, and Sydney closed down. There's a lot of volatility, folks. Tokyo ended a little changed after spending part of the, di part of the day in negative territory. Now, here's something. Some markets followed Wall Street higher after President Trump said on Twitter he expects major oil producer South Arabia and Russia to back away from their price-cutting war. As I said, this may be the first major step because you got to understand a lot of these oil producers, there's a lot of stocks that are bleeding because of this. So if the oil market can stop bleeding, a lot of the stocks within that sector will stop bleeding as well. U.S. data showed 6.6 .6 million Americans applied for unemployment this week. Hard dose of reality. That was double the previous week's record-breaking U.S. job loss of 3.3 million. On Friday, which is today, the government's monthly report is due and is expected to show that Americans law, American job machine came to a sudden halt in March. As a result of the coronavirus, economists have forecast, listen to this number, it's important, shed about 150,000 jobs. So this is what the market was anticipating, a loss of 150,000 jobs for the month of March. And the unemployment rose from a half century low of 3.5 to 3.9. Well, let me show you the real numbers. This is what the market was anticipating, a loss of 150,000. Let's look at the biggest surprise of the week. This is the consensus, down 150,000. The actual number was 701,000, all right? And unemployment level is now 4.4%, not 3.9, the consensus. So we were expecting 150,000 negative, and we got 701,000 negative. So as you could see here, the number is substantially worse than expected. And folks, that's the news for this week. That's the biggest unexpected news I've had this week. I was honestly expecting the number to be about, I wasn't expecting it to be negative 150,000, but I wasn't expecting negative 701,000. I was thinking it'll be more in line with about 300,000 and so forth. S&P futures contracts, down, 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 down. Not positive at all. As you could see here, I drew these trends, these, these resistance and support levels yesterday to give you an idea of what I'm expecting the market to do for the next few days. And so far, we've been in line. Expect volatility to be rampant. Right now, we're, this is today's data right here, as you could see. And right now, we're gonna be opening down just a bit, not too much. Actually, the number just went positive, which is kind of odd because it would appear that the market was pricing in much worse employment loss than what we saw, but again, Consensus 150,000, actual number 701,000. I'm shocked that the number even went positive for a minute. If I had to guess that it was mostly short covering. There was not a lot of, um... anyhow, that's my opinion, but do expect the market to cool off today. Expect more volatility. Volatility seems to be a little better than a week earlier, but with this unemployment number for the month, things are just not looking any better. And my second biggest, this is my first big surprise for the week, and that's the, 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 the point of today's video. I wanna show you the biggest surprise for the week, but there's two. First, it's this unemployment number, which is gonna be very hard to swallow. But the second one is volatility. Notice volatility is going down. The market, as you can see here, has been going choppy. It hasn't really been going down. And trading range is still very strong, but volatility volatility levels are going down which is positive and it's telling me that the fear that we were feeling last week on this downside level here that we saw, that most of this was panic. And it makes a lot of sense. If we could stay within this range and maybe even decline just a little bit, I think volatility would just pop a little higher, maybe up to 60. This is the VIX, by the way. And just to give you an idea for those who don't follow me day to day, these are the highest volatility levels we've seen since 2008. This is a 20 year level on a monthly. And as you could see here, we went almost, we actually went higher than 59. If you look on a daily here, uh, if 
we want a daily. We went to 82, but the month is not over yet. So it's still calculating that. It'll show up next if you want. But if you look here, look 10 years, you could see here, let's see if I can go 20 years weekly. I guess not. Anyhow, the volatility level blew this out of the water. But as you can see here for the month, we're turning down. We're actually going a little lower and there's a good chance we may start coming off. If we can get oil short up a little bit, if we can get oil stocks to stop bleeding, there is a lot of market cap in the Dow and the S&P 500 that's oil related and energy related. So if, if Trump can help us with this right now, it would be huge. I mean, really, really, really big. Also, let's see if this unemployment number can stay near the current level or if it continues higher. But I'm really surprised. I'm really surprised that volatility, as you can see here, for some reason it wants to show me intraday data over a month. Why? I have no idea. That's ridiculous. So as you can see here over the past, let's see here, it peaked about two weeks ago and it's been going down and the market, as you can see here, has not been ex exactly stable. So if you're trading the S&P 500 right now, the numbers, the numbers you want to focus on are on the upside about 2650, on the downside about 2384, and there's a good chance over the next few sessions we're going to remain within this level or within this range for quite some time. If you're trading the NASDAQ, let me give you those numbers for the NASDAQ. If you're trading for the NASDAQ, the number on the upside, this is the QQQ, it's 195.50 on the upside and about 177.40 to the downside. Expect the market to stay about 195 on the QQQ and down to about 177. And if you're looking at the Dow Jones, let me give you the ultimate figures because I know a lot of you are focused on the Dow Jones. So let me give you those numbers. If you're looking at the Dow, it would be really, really good if we can break above 22,600. Really, really positive. And the bottom line numbers here that I'm looking at are 19,600. If we break below 19,600, we are going lower. But again, volatility going lower is a major surprise, a positive surprise, which is telling us that markets were very, very fearful when we were around, when we had volatility around 80. And probably 60 to 50 is a more reasonable level in light of where we're at right now. That's positive. And the negative report is this 701,000 unemployment where the consensus was 150. And that is not going to, um, that's not going to help the stock market at all. As a matter of fact, if we look at the futures again, just to give you a little taste, yeah, the Dow's down about 80. It went to as low as 20,900. Now it's near the middle range. It's been just going between 21,352 overnight to about 20,909. So again, what a week, right? Volatility lower, unemployment higher. What a combination, right? Pay attention to those resistance and support levels. They're gonna come in very, very handy over the near term. Now, before I let you go, I wanna remind you, everyone, no matter how the market looks, there's always a silver lining. If 2008 taught us anything, it's that a recession offers huge, huge opportunities. I've been talking about it all week. The well-connected financial elite are already making huge moves. I'm not kidding. And they're doing it on their own secret market. That's right. James West just revealed the secret behind the gray market. For 150 years, folks, 150 years, it was forbidden to regular people until today. Knowing this secret could mint more millions than the gold rush. Folks, take advantage of this. This is the time to be nimble and think differently. The industrial production and the internet combined. Can you imagine that? Click the link below or the button at the end of this video, gain instant access to this market and get in on early on the unicorn stocks that could make millions during the recession. Again, folks, keep in mind, if you know this secret, it can print more millionaires than the gold rush, the industrial revolution, and the internet combined. Now, James West has got tons of tons of experience. What he's going to show you goes back 150 years. You need to learn this. Remember, the best traders take fundamental 
sentiment, technicals, all of that into account. Click the link below. Click the link below at the end of this video. Gain instant access to this market and get in on get in on it early. This is a unicorn stocks that could make you millions during the recession. Folks, this is the period in time that will really make a difference between traders who are savvy and traders who are just following the herd. Listen to what James West has to tell you. Follow the link below. Get in on this now. Follow the link below. There's no time to waste. Talk soon and have a great weekend. Get some rest.